Are you looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football and basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash bluewire and use code bluewire. That's code bluewire at prizepicks.com slash bluewire for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Today's episode is brought to you by cars.com. With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, just go to cars.com. It's magical. Hi, hello. Uh, welcome to the Mavs Moneyball podcast. I'm not sure if I'm going to be putting this bit at the end of the podcast or at the beginning, so I'm just going to cover my bases. But me and Kirk recorded about 35 minutes talking about the Mavericks' first day of free agency because we thought things had died down for a little bit. And then just as both of us were about to go to bed, what do you know? Patrick Beverly, one of the few remaining uh, significantly good options for the Mavs on the board, re-signed with the Los Angeles Clippers for three years, $40 million. Uh, a familiar number because that is the number that the Mavericks were reported to want to sign him on if you read the reports from ESPN's Tim McMahon and uh, other places. So uh, we just recorded a 35-minute podcast about how there's not that many options for the Mavs, and the other big name is off the board. Uh, Kirk, you are wound up and ready to go, so you have the floor. Okay, guys, Like I, I don't know how to put this any clearer. This is now the worst offseason we've had since the new collective bargaining agreement was assigned. You want if if you want to pitch at me like our our friend uh, Isaac at uh, Locked On Mavs did that you know the anytime we sign uh, Chris Dapps Porzingis to an extension, you know it, here's the deal with that we m- waged a massive wager uh, a bet on on Porzingis's future signing him to a guaranteed 160 million dollar max deal plus we sent two first round picks plus we took on a whole bunch of crappy salary I didn't want to talk about this right now. But Porzingis' health is a lot more freaky than we all want to talk about. Plus, we don't really know how good he's going to be. But let's move on to the to the part where I'm talking about the Mavs really having a frustrating offseason. The whole point of this offseason, the entire point of getting off of Harrison Barnes' contract, was to have the cap space to fill with good players and then sign Chris Dapp Porzingis to go over the cap to then be able to get, I think it's not the mid-level ex- uh, uh, exception, it's one of the minor ones, but be able to sign lots of good players. Right now, we have $28 million in cap space and no one to sign it to. Are we going to give Boogie a max deal? Are we going to sign my, my my good friend Tomas Sadoransky? Are we going to sign, like, who is left here? It's going to get frightening, folks. Udonis Haslam's an unrestricted free agent. That could be fun. Trey Lyles. Uh, Dra- Dragon Bender, uh, guys, it's bad. It's bad. This is this is horrifying. Now the Mavericks still might be good next year, 
because they're really good at, at, at putting things together. But in terms of a plan, in terms of where we were going to go to build a base, a core constituency, which you could surround Chris Stapps and Luca with and, and engender them with some faith in the future of the organization, that's gone right now. This sucks. I don't know how better to phrase it because the Mavericks waited to sign Beverly or they waited to make him an offer. Heck, we they didn't even talk to him. They talked to his agent, Bill Duffy. His agent, Bill Duffy, was also involved with this Goran Dragic ch ch chicanery earlier in the evening, and God knows what's going to happen there. I think Josh has a take that, that – Dragic might end up being on the Mavs in the morning anyways, just because, you know, we're going to, we said earlier, they might regret uh, uh, passing up the opportunity to sign a player like Dragic because they had all this space. And now we're here just, you know, holding our thumbs. This is ridiculous. Uh, it is, I, I can't miss my words. It is a complete, utter, embarrassing organizational failure for them to let Patrick Beverly re-sign with the Clippers without even talking to him. There's no other way you can say it. You can tell me, you know, I saw something about, um, you know, Brad Townsend said, hey, maybe the Mavs thought that he was going back to the Clippers anyway so that there was no use in talking to them. I, I don't buy that. Um, maybe that's if that's how they want to feel, then that's how they want to feel. But you cannot spend so much time, you know, there's reports and, and you, you know, Bill Duffy talks about, hey, I'm Luca's agent too. You know, this is a great place to play. There's so many links going back to Beverly and the Mavs. And you cannot just throw your hands up when you don't talk to him at the end of the, at the first day of free agency. And then he signed, re-signs with the team and you can't throw your hands up and say, oh, well, uh, we were never going to get him. Then what the fuck were you doing for the last month with all these reports linking Beverly to the Mavs? Maybe his agent was playing that up to get the Clippers to re-sign him to a deal. But for it to ha for that deal to happen at you know midnight or whatever fuck time it is right now, and to not happen at five oh one, that just makes me think you know the, they saw this shit show with the Dragic trade, and then Beverly's like, you know what, I'm gonna you know I'm gonna resign with the Clippers because I have no idea what the Mavs are doing. Obviously, I'm just speculating. I don't know, but I'm just trying to wrap my brain around the Mavericks. One of the Mavericks' top off season priorities, which is not. Just like rumor, we know that from what the reports have said, and to not even talk to him before he resigns, I don't, I don't understand. Like, I know you're going to listen to the rest of the podcast because I'm not going to let that go in the trash can. You know, we're gonna, you're going to hear me talk about this, but I don't get it. I don't know what they're thinking. I, it's, it's like they shit their brains out 24 hours ago and they don't know what to do. Like. Uh, I'm so confused. I just maybe that, like we said, there's a trade that's coming. But man, I, I'm done trying to sugarcoat or trying to give them the benefit of the doubt. You, you know, maybe you know, hey, maybe they do somehow surprise me. But it, it's it's a process failure if you are done star chasing and you do not give Patrick Beverly the deal that he wants at 501 or 601, whatever the time zone you're in, and you give him that deal and you say, hey, we want you to be our starting point guard. We want to get back to the playoffs. You give us an edge. You give us what we need around our two stars. Let's go. I don't understand how that doesn't happen when you say you're not star chasing. I don't give a crap what the excuses are because that is bullshit. So before we let the folks get back to the to the rest of the pod, which you should listen to because we actually talk about some good things. I just there's there's a scene in the wire where the the season I'm pretty sure it's season five bad guy Marlo gets into a bit of a tussle with the security guard as he tries to steal a sucker, and he does. He effectively steals a sucker and then threatens the security guard, and he says to the guard, "You want it to be one way." but it's the other way. And that's what the Mavericks don't seem to understand. They think things are going a particular angle and then they just get the rug pulled out from them in these free agent situations. And it's really, really just these free agent situations. You give Donnie Nelson a chance to work with some good contracts and some available players on the market. And he's made magic happen more times than I can count. But this free agency stuff is just embarrassing. I don't know what to say. Yeah. It's just, and like I said, you know, Patrick Beverly is not an MVP. Patrick Beverly is not an all-star. Patrick Beverly is not an all-NBA guy. Patrick Beverly is not the difference between you winning 30 games and you winning 50 games or whatever. So I know people are going to be like, well, you're, you're losing your mind over a player that he's a role player. You're not going to do. I don't. You got to look at what the options are. You got to look at what the Mavericks need. And he fills so many. It is so hard in this league to get one player to fill multiple points of need 
it is so hard. You usually you have to spread that out over a couple of players because guess what? The players that could do the multiple things that fit you, the holes in your roster, those guys are expensive because they're pretty good at basketball and a lot of teams want them. Patrick Beverly gave you outside shooting to spread the floor with Luca and KP. He gave you point guard defense at a position where you have absolutely no one on the roster that can guard a point guard right now. I don't care what you say about well, whoever else, maybe Justin Jackson, Dorian Finney-Smith. We don't have anyone that can guard a point guard on the roster right now. Oh, I just said we. I hate when I do that. The Mavericks don't have someone on the roster that can guard point guards right now. They also don't have someone with playoff experience, which if they want to get back into the playoffs soon, you kind of need that because it's really hard to win games when no one on your roster has been part of a winning NBA team before aside from your Devin Harris's and your JJ Barea's who are your older veterans your veteran minimum end of the rotation guys which Harris is going to be and JJ is coming off an Achilles injury you know you need you need one of those guys to not be someone who comes off your bench for 20 minutes a night you need one of those guys to be someone who starts for you and plays 25 to 30 minutes a night because it's a different hierarchy it's you know in terms of how guys are looking up at each other in the locker room so you let a guy that gives so that can fill so many holes with one player and you don't i, I don't understand how you don't talk to him i mean that's it, it, that feels like a war crime like someone needs to go to jail for that like i don't it doesn't make any sense to me like uh i, I don't know how the mavericks can spend their time doing this this drogic trade nonsense and not reach out i don't know how one you're doing you know obviously you need to be talking and negotiating so maybe you can't do two things at once but i don't yeah I don't know. I don't know, Kirk. I'm, I'm, I'm the Mavericks. I thought the Mavericks would never really surprise me again in, ter- in terms of their ineptitude when it comes to the free agency. I really thought I had seen it all. Like I really did. You know, the star chasing and 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 waiting for meetings and, and giving Dwight Howard a, a cartoon to try to pitch him to come to the team. Um, watching Darren Williams pick Joe Johnson over a, a still All Star capable Dirk Nowitzki, like. You know, I thought I'd seen it all in the last eight years, but this this takes the cake. I, 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 when you consider just the kind of the process into into these decisions and the strategy, I do not understand it. This is obviously not the worst in terms of the Mavericks are going to be relatively okay because they have two stars under the age of twenty five. But when you talk about this free agency in terms of planning and strategy. And optics. I just don't. I just don't understand how you can come up with one worse. You know, since the title team. Well, listen to the rest of the podcast, folks. We have some other gems to drop. <laughs> we basically say the same thing, but we're not as mad because the Mavericks didn't let Patrick Beverly go. So, uh, yeah. So that's where we're at. I'm going to stick this at the beginning of the podcast. So if you'd like to listen, please keep listening. We'd love you to listen. There's ads, and we like it when people listen to the ads. So the rest of the podcast will follow as normal, and we kind of go over the rest of the Mavericks Day 1 free agency extravaganza, getting more into the Miami uh, stuff. And, uh, yeah, so keep listening. It's it's a good discussion. Well, at least it gives us something to talk about, but uh, I wish it wasn't this. So, Kirk, thanks for hopping back on, and Lord knows what we're going to see the next day. All right. Later, guys. All right. See ya. This is Advertiser Content, brought to you by Frito-Lay. Hello, I'm Chip Murphy, here to get you ready for the big tournament. Tonight we'll break down... We break down who will be cutting... Cut! What are you two doing? Sorry, Chip. Prez here got his feathers ruffled when I told him Ruffles has zero chance of winning the title. And I was letting Dip know that she is not taking into account Ruffles' iconic ridges. Guys! It's March. We have to start talking about the tournament. We are. It is the 2023 Frito-Lay Snackin'. We're talking about big-time matchups between Cheetos, Smart Food, Lay's, Sun Chips, and more. Just head to the Frito-Lay Snack Bracket and vote for your favorite chip, pretzel, or dip for a chance to win up to $1,000 or a year's worth of snacks. This sounds great. Keep up the good work. Just go to frito No purchase necessary. Sweepstakes ends 4-3-2023. Void wherever hidden. Here's worth of snacks awarded in the form of 52 coupons, each good for one bag of chips. See official rules at frito Hi, hello. Welcome to the Mavs Moneyball podcast. This is Josh Bo, one of the many editors over at MavsMoneyball.com. 
It is 11.35 Texas time on a Sunday evening. Uh, Kirk informed me that the people wanted a podcast to recap what has been uh, an interesting, to put it extremely nicely, uh, first day of NBA free agency in regards to the Mavericks. So we decided to hop on, and Kirk is, of course, with me tonight and graciously with me as it is way past midnight over on the East Coast. Kirk, I already know the answer to this question, but how are you doing, man? I mean, I, I opened up a Mountain Dew about 30 minutes ago. I'm too old for this crap. But, uh, you know, the nice part about pushing back the start of free agency to before my dinner is I've been roughly upset since about 4.30 this afternoon. So, you know, we're just really, like, we're moving the timetable up. So instead of being mad only in the middle of the night, I'm mad in the middle of the evening into the middle of the night, which is really great for my family. My wife's very pleased with me. We're going to have a great time with this because I think we, you know, I, I, I think, you know, the, the, the people need to hear some frustration because, you know, the, we're going to be fed a lot of PR chicanery the next few days. So let's get let's get in front of this uh, and, and talk and have some straight Mavs talk. OK, well, let's kind of reset for people that are listening to this and they might not really know. Maybe they didn't catch everything because it was a wild first three or four hours of free agency, especially when you consider that we kind of thought a lot of things were already decided uh, before free agency even started. It seemed like everything was a done deal. And yeah, those things were done deals, but there were also a lot of other done deals, apparently. Um, a lot of activity uh, today. So basically, I think the kind of the summary, I don't know how to get how, how you want to tackle this first, Kirk, but like basically, we are here at 11, now 11.37 Texas time, first day of free, free agency has been going on for over six hours now. The Mavericks have added zero new players. Uh, their moves so far have been they have gotten uh, Chris Stops to agree to his full max contract uh, reportedly five years 158 million dollars uh, further reports came out that there are no clauses or injury distinctions uh on the contract it is straight up five years 158 million dollars no options uh so that is uh, in the bag for the mavs and then the other thing that has come out for the mavs is that dwight powell has agreed to a three-year 33 Million dollar extension, which will of course kick in not this season but the next season, because he, he opted into his player option, so he will only count at uh, ten million against the cap. But even then, you know, three for thirty three is actually a pretty remarkably good deal for Pal. Basically, only getting a one million dollar raise over what he's earning this season. And it was actually kind of funny because that got announced. You know, I think the rumors were swirling about Pal like an hour or two before uh, the free agency officially began. And I think that kind of put everyone in a good mood and a good headspace. It was like, hey, all right, good start. You know, they didn't necessarily overpay for Pal, or you know, they get they got a, a market uh, deal, you know, market fair deal for him. And I think that put everyone in a good mood. And then <laughs> I'd say by the end of it, they kind of lost all that goodwill. So basically, the only thing that the Mavericks have been involved in tonight, uh, a absolutely bizarre. Uh, turn of events as they tried to insert themselves into the Jimmy Butler uh, trade to the Miami Heat, the sign-in trade from the Sixers to the Heat. The Mavericks decided to be the third team to help facilitate this trade and help offload some of the money that Miami needed to dump so that they could bring in so they could bring in and sign Jimmy Butler. And originally it was reported Kirk, you heard this on the jump, uh, Rachel Nichols mm -hmm. show on ESPN and Ramona Shelburne from ESPN said that the Mavericks are going to trade for Goran Dragic, the Slovenian point guard from Miami, uh, you know, uh, Luca's teammate, um, you know, still a solid player right now, even though he's in his early thirties and the Mavs reporters uh, then confirmed that that was what was going to happen. And then for as much as hell can break loose on Twitter about the NBA, that's basically what happened. Um, it, Mark Stein came out and then said that the deal is actually not for Goran Dragic. It's for Kelly Olynyk and Derek Jones. And Kelly Olynyk is, you know, the stretch big that used to play for Boston and is a 10 points per game scorer who shoots 35, 37% from three and makes 11 million this year and 12 million next year. And no draft. The Mavs originally drafted him way back in the day and traded back, traded him back to, to was it Boston? 
Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, for, for Shane Larkin. Larkin. Yeah. And uh, so the, the Marks, according to Mark Stein and what the Mavericks were telling him was that the deal was never for Dragic. It was for Olenek and Derek Jones. Uh, some other Mavs related reporters and some other reports came out that that was the case, that it was never Dragic. Uh, Bill Duffy, uh, Dragic agent, man, I can't even say it. it's too late for me to pronounce pronounce names tonight. But Bill Duffy, he is the agent of Goron. And he's also the agent of Luca. Uh, he came out and said that the Mavericks pulled out. He told Ramona Shelburne that the Mavericks were pulling out. They didn't want to take on Drogic $19 million this season, which was a player option he opted into a couple months ago. And then he's a free agent after that. So it's just basically a one-year deal. But he said the Mavs pulled out because they had other aspirations and they didn't want Drogic uh, $19 million on their cap this summer because apparently they had – some other moves they wanted to make, but they kept coming back that Drogic was not supposed to be in the deal. It was just supposed to be Olenek, Derek Jones. But then cap people were coming back and saying, that doesn't make any sense because Olenek and Derek Jones by itself isn't enough money for Miami to offload to facilitate the Jimmy Butler trade. And then it came out that apparently the sticking point wasn't the Mavs and Drogic. It was that the Heat didn't want to trade Derek Jones and the Mavs wouldn't do the Mm -hmm. deal without Derek Jones. So, as of right now, the deal is dead. We have literally heard every possible angle about why it's dead. But the Mavericks wanted Jones. The Heat didn't want to trade Jones. The Mavericks wanted Dragic. The Heat didn't want to trade him, or some some sort of some sort of the other. And basically, we're, that saga lasted the almost the entire length of free agency, at least from from about seven o'clock Texas time to where we're at now. And what that stand where the Mavs stand, they exactly where free agency started for the most part, and a lot of names are off the board. So that's kind of where we're at. We're going to get into it more with our feelings and and what we think. But Kurt, we'll start <laughs> with you. I just kind of, we have. I feel like that we had to reset, even if everyone was following the saga. But Kirk, what are your? I know you got a lot, but you know, initially, you know, what are you thinking right now uh, as we wrap up day one of free agency? Well, I think we need to preface this a little bit. You and I are not sourced. We don't talk you know we're we're you know, you're a journalist i'm a dude but we're, we're not like talking to anybody in the mavs organization what you and i do contrary to what you know some local dallas sports media seems to think you and i pay a lot of attention to the nba and we pay a lot of attention to the mavericks we are not like licensed experts but both of us know what we're talking about in a way that a great deal of people don't um, and so I feel pretty confident about what we're talking about tonight because I tracked this stuff. I was on my, I've, I've been tracking this stuff on my phone for the better part of three weeks now. I, 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 all the ins and outs, I feel very confident about what we've seen, what we, you know, witnessed and what were uh, the opinions we're about to toss out, but they are opinions. I really want to emphasize that. So where, where I'm really, really frustrated and I don't know if I'm kind of putting the, my, the cart before the horse here. But I feel like that the Mavericks entered this free agency market with a wildly different expectation than what actually happened. I've seen enough sourcing from the Mavericks media and people who are really le- like legitimate reporters to, to give me the indication that the Mavericks thought that a few big deals were going to happen and then we were going to be waiting on Kevin Durant, Kawhi Leonard, and maybe like Al Hortford and those sorts of things to, to happen, Kyrie Irving. But when, when Kevin Durant and Kyrie, you know, when that news was broken by Woj about an hour before the official start, that moved the timetable up entirely for the whole league. And then with this, uh, you know, Miami Heat and Philadelphia trade, which is technically in limbo right now, uh, everything was moving really, really quickly. And Dallas was nowhere to be found. A number of mid-tier free agents that we have been interested in, they have been linked to, but nearly a lot of the guys that we were talking about, your your Boyan Bogdanoviches and and uh, players of kind of that ilk, the people who are making you know fifteen to twenty million a year, they're all gone now. Um, that that can't be emphasized enough. I mean, the only interested Mavs free agents that are still technically on the market are Patrick Beverly and Danny Green. Uh, Patrick Beverly did not talk with the Mavericks today. I know you wanted to, to touch on that in a few minutes. Danny Green mentioned that he at least spoke with them. 
But today there's been over $3 billion in contracts that have been uh, agreed to in some way, shape, or form. And the only part that the Mavericks played in that was the $158 million with Porzingis, which was understood, and the additional 30, you know, what is it, $33 million for, Porz- or, uh, for Dwight Powell. So Dallas is really out here just looking like they've been caught with their with their pants down. Now, I believe in Donnie Nelson to to a large degree. He's been too good at this job for too long. But to so grossly miscalculate what was happening and not tune on the fly to where you get involved in a haphazard uh, salary dump and and the Mavericks even, you know, the, I, I want to say it was Brad Townsend of the Dallas Morning News who said that that the Mavericks are looked at as a salary dump. Like, that's a terrible place to be. So I, I want to let you respond here, but I, I must say that where the Mavericks think they are and where they actually are in relation to this rebuild is is really embarrassing because they've walked away from the first day of free agency with a whole bunch of stuff up in the air. Obviously, that can change. Maybe I'm going to look stupid in the in a few hours, but right now this stinks. It, you're right, and I think the thing that, we have to emphasize, you know, because I think, you know, for what it's worth, you know, we can definitely be the, the more cynical side of talking about the Mavericks. But like you said, regardless of what happens tomorrow or the next day, you know, even if it does work out for the Mavericks, uh, you know, I know me and you, we are big process over results guys. And hey, if the Mavericks end up with Beverly, if they end up with Danny Green, that is tremendous, but you cannot look at what happened today as a blueprint or feel good about, you know, from a team building standpoint, especially when you look at practically every other Southwest division team feels like they just, they stocked up in a major way over the last month or so. Like uh, just to give you a rundown. And so obviously Kemba Walker is gone. He went to Boston, but like you said, Kirk, so many of the mid tier guys, you know, when the Mavericks said, Hey, well, it didn't necessarily say this, but when the reports were starting to come out over the last couple of days, when it was obvious that Kemba was going to Boston, there were a lot of reports coming from the Mavs that they are done star chasing and they were aggressively go after mid-tier guys. And they are not going to try to go after any max guys unless something falls into their lap. And we all were like, thank you. You know, the sins of the last eight years will be forgiven and they will... They will go out and they will do what they need to do to surround their two young stars with the role players that they need to make the team better and make a playoff push. So here's where we stand. Dallas has none of those players right now. And instead, J.J. Redick has gone to the New Orleans Pelicans for two years, $26.5 million. Absolute Terrence, Right. Terrence Ross is going back to the Magic. Uh, for a $54 million deal. Now, when you talk about the money, you know, we can uh, disagree about the money, but these are players that would either, that would most likely start and be really helpful contributors to the Mavs. So Terrence Ross has gone to the Magic. Jeremy Lamb, who I know you hate, but I like, he's going to the Pacers for $31.5 million. Uh, Bogdanovich is going to the Jazz for a $73 million deal. Obviously pretty rich, but he would be the Mavericks easily be the Mavericks third third or second best shooter on the team and give Luca and Kristaps uh, a a great floor spacer. Uh, Brooke Lopez is back to the Bucks, which is expected. Julius Randle, who I don't think either of us like, but still a somewhat serviceable NBA player, he's to the Knicks for sixty three million dollars. Malcolm Brogdon goes to the Pacers in a trade sign and trade. He's four years, eighty five million dollars. Obviously, you know, we had skepticism about Chris Middleton. He went to uh, back to the Bucks for $178 million. Tobias Harris, who we were both kind of iffy on, but there were some reports that the Mavericks might try like non-max Hail Mary if the market for him was somewhat cooler than he expected. Uh, that didn't happen. He went back to Philly for a five-year $180 million deal. So <laughs> Nikola Mirotic, who I know, Kirk, you don't like, but he's going to Spain. Uh, Trevor Ariza went to the Sacramento Kings for $25 million. Ricky Rubio to the Suns for $51 million. Um, it's <laughs> Darren Collison announces retirement. Alfred Mina goes to the Magic for $29 million. I, I'm listing off a lot of wings that maybe the Mavericks weren't interested in, but these were options. And all of these guys, regardless of their salary, would have been immediate impact contributors. Uh, Rodney Hood goes back to the to the Trailblazers for two years, $16 million. 
Dwayne Dedman, if the Mavericks were really wanting another big to play next to Kristaps, uh, he goes to the Kings for three years, $40 million. Al Horford, for some reason, goes to the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, kind of a strange move because they everyone in their starting lineup is apparently going to be 6'10". Um, but he goes there for a four-year, $109 million. So the Mavs were not going to be and I'm not sure if that's a real deal right now because I'm not sure what's happening with all this stuff. With because because Butler Tim Cato about ten minutes ago, right before we started, reported that this deal, at least the Maverick side of it, is off. So right now, uh, Jimmy Butler is technically a free agent, and I'm not sure what that means about Al Al Hortford as well. This is this is going to get funky. But go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, you're good. For what it's worth, I think uh, Kyle Newbeck, uh, who's a Philly reporter, he says, I continue to believe the Philly and Miami portion of this deal is not in jeopardy, but now we just have to see what happens with this snag. So so maybe the, the deal will still go through. They just have to find another partner that's not the Mavericks. Um, so, yeah, so I just listed off a bunch of names that we talked about in our last podcast, which was before the weekend. Um those names are all gone. Thaddeus Young is to the Bulls. Didn't mention him. Three years, $41 million. So that's a combination of bigs that maybe you would have liked to see play next to Chris Dops, uh, wings that could that they desperately need um, to either play a guard spot or a forward spot next to Luka and Chris Dops. Some shooting, some defense, you know, you name it, what the Mavericks need, the, the little bit of everything and all those names I just mentioned. They're all gone. The Mavericks now have a small crop to pick from in terms of free agents. Patrick Beverly and Danny Green are still out there, like you said. But the kicker, Brad Townsend of the Dallas Free News, I'm circling back, like you said, because I want to read this out loud because I just have to – everyone has to hear the sheer lunacy of this tweet on a day that the Mavericks did absolutely nothing in free agency. Brad Townsend, circled, quote, circled back to source. Scheduled Mavs-Beverly discussion did not occur tonight, most likely due to time-consuming Miami-Philly-Dallas mess. Unclear where Mavs stand with Beverly, but doesn't sound as promising as it did enter in today. Okay, what the fuck? How do you how do you let that happen if you're Dallas? And how do you let that happen if you're deciding that you are not star chasing and you're going to go after these mid-tier guys and these role players that fit next to KP and Luka and try to build the team that way, get attainable guys? What have we been hearing about Beverly and the Mavs for the last month or so? He's got Bill Duffy... Uh, as an agent, you know, that's the Luca connection is there. The Mavericks have done their homework, I would imagine. How do you – if your goal is to to move away from the star chasing, these mid-tier guys, as I just listed out those that long list of names of guys that have already signed, those mid-tier guys, they don't like to wait. You know, the stars will wait. If someone offers them money, they're going to take it right away because they aren't stars and they can't just assume that every team is going to have an offer for them that they want because teams are going to move on if you don't accept it and then go out and give their money to the next guy. You know, these mid-tier guys, they take the money usually as quickly as possible because they do not have the earnings uh, history as some of these big stars. So why – if Beverly is one of your targets, why would you not at 5.01 p.m. – Call him or be at his doorstep and be like, here's your three years, 40 million, three years, 42, three years, 39, whatever it's going to be. Here's your, here's that money. Let's go. You know, let's do this. Don't wait around for Kawhi. Don't wait around for whatever the Lakers want to do. Here's your money right now for a guy that has made what? 20 million in uh, a career earnings in his entire NBA career. Like give the guy his money. He's going to take it. And now maybe, hey, maybe the Mavs did, and he's for some reason saying, you know what, I want to wait. Maybe he really values being on a title contending team over collecting the biggest payday of his career. And that's admirable. But I got to have a feeling if the Maverick, obviously the Mavericks didn't give him an offer because they didn't talk to him. So that theory is complete, you know, completely shot down. So I, I'm Kirk, I'm confused. I don't understand how. If your mindset is we're not going to star chase anymore, we're going to get mid-tier guys, and the mid-tier guy that you've been rumored to go after for some time now and he's an absolute bona fide 100% fit with your two stars, he plays defense, he shoots, he doesn't need the ball, and he gives you a little bit of that edge that you need for a team that is a little young and doesn't know how to win, and Beverly – a low key under the radar has always been on winning teams in his NBA career. You know, sure. He's played with James Harden for most of it, but Hey, that guy's been in the playoffs a good amount and he knows what that environment is like. And he can 
let Kristaps and Luca kind of feed off of that a little bit. Kirk, how does that happen? I don't (laughs) – you have to try to explain it to me because I just don't get it. And like you said, it makes me think that the Mavericks, like, were they not prepared? Like, when they said that they didn't want to get Kemba and they wanted to move – who was the second guy? Like, who was the next target? Who? What was their next list looking like? Because it's got to be a short list because there's not a lot of guys left. Well, it's it's really going to be hard to answer that question because the way the Dallas Mavericks operate paired with the, you know, the 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 inability, like they just really don't answer questions. I don't think we're ever going to find out the truth. I will say that I feel, and this may be a heat of the moment take, but I feel that this has been their worst free agency opening day since before they won the title. Uh, you know, the, the collective bargaining agreement, as we know, it has been in, the, in existence since, you know, uh, late 2011, uh, right before Christmas. And the Mavericks really have, have never done, they've never done well, but they've also never really died with the exception of the, the DeAndre Jordan summer. Uh, which, you know, was kind of beyond their control, but frankly was getting involved with an agent uh, who has since passed away, uh, who was really, you know, not on the up and up, to to be quite honest about it. And this sort of situation where they look like they have no idea what they're doing, while over $3 billion in contracts have been agreed to, is a little disconcerting. I mean, I I hope that Luka Doncic and Kristaps Porzingis aren't paying a lot of attention, because otherwise, you know, right now they're... To, to see first that they weren't targeting anyone, or at least it feels that way. Then to see that they temporarily, you know, that they rejected the idea of Goran Dragic into their cap space because they had bigger plans for it. What does that mean? I'm looking at the free at a free agent tracker right now. Are we going to go give Iman, Iman Shumpert money? Are we going to go give uh, Costa Kufos? Uh, what about Boban? He's good. Uh, what about, you know, Anthony Tolliver, who's my age, or Glenn Robinson the third, or Lance <laughs> Stevenson? What about Emmanuel Moutier? Things get dark. It is not good out there, guys. Like, t- like uh, Thomas Sidor- uh, Tomas Sadoransky hive, please stand up. Alfred Payton, we're going to go sign Frank Kaminsky and just make it the all-white guys brigade. I have no idea what they're going to do, because... If you look at their free agency apart from Porzingis, and I just can't emphasize this enough, we still love that deal. I want to talk about the risk assessment involved another night. It's not right now, but I do want to talk about it. Maybe we can do this later in the week. But right now, we're I'm at a loss for who they're going to sign. Like this stinks, and I I, I don't I have no idea what their plans are. I mean, forty percent of the league was up for free agency, which is why this free agent list is so long. But this is awful. Yeah, and it's and we gotta we gotta bring up the point that okay, so you say that you're not star chasing. You're hey, we're not gonna wait around to these big names when they're just gonna pass us over and we miss out on those other guys. Great, congratulations. So apparently they picked the two mid tier guys that are the two mid tier guys that are waiting on the stars to make their decision. <laughs> and it's that's hard to do. I'm almost I'm almost impressed. Like when you really peel it back, if I wasn't so upset, I would probably like be say, "Wow, Be- you guys managed to really <laughs> nail this." Because they're waiting on Danny Green. Because obviously, if Kawhi goes back to Toronto, Danny Green is going to go back to Toronto. Like he's going to run that back. Toronto's going to run it back. They'll pay him his money. So that's fine. You know, I can kind of understand that. But what you? <laughs> How do you not in the meantime, okay, we got to wait on Danny Green. Like, you know, that as an organization, you know, you talk, they talked to him today. So obviously they should know that. How do you not go to Patrick Beverly? Like, how do you not talk to him today? I don't even, I don't understand how that's possible. How you don't talk to him today. How do you not reach out to him? How do you not get him on the phone? It is wild to me. Maybe they, I'm guessing what is maybe they thought, you know, the Dragic thing was going to happen. And, you know, the, if they had him, they probably don't need Beverly anymore. So maybe that's where the thinking is. But it, that's just – that is very mind-boggling to me how th- if you're a team that says you're going to do this and then 
to not, basically not do it is it's wild. And when you talk, talk about what are they going to do next? And, you know, the free agent list is pretty bleak after Beverly and green, you know, I think the, to be fair and to maybe play devil's advocate, the Mavericks do have a propensity of pulling trades out of their asses at uh, very random Absolutely. times. So maybe that there is a move out there that we are not seeing that is a trade into their cap space, much like the Dragic potential deal, but you know, maybe it's another name that we are not hearing. Um, there was definitely I was getting some hope for maybe the Mavericks stealing Robert Covington away from Minnesota as Minnesota really wanted D'Angelo Russell. But that's gone by the wayside because Russell is going to the Warriors as part of the sign and trade with Kevin Durant. So that's gone. But maybe it's another move like that, you know, depending on where Kawhi goes, maybe the Mavericks can be opportunistic and get some good talent with a trade. The thing about the trades, though, is, you know, as me and you are talking right now, it is hard for us to say this is what they're because trades the way the Mavericks operate with the trade market. It just it you don't know it until it happens a lot of the times. And we can maybe pick out some names, but we don't really know. You know, like you said, we're not sourced. We're just kind of observing what's going on and, and reacting to it. So if you look at it as just a few a pure free agent play, it is absolutely bleak because the longer you let a guy like Patrick Beverly out there, and look, I know people are gonna come at me and be like. Yeah, the entire Mavs offseason is resting on a guy who scores eight points a game and, and gets five assists. And you know what? Like, maybe it does. It might. It just because might. They didn't do anything else. <laughs> like, so that's where we're at. And hey, if if we wake up tomorrow morning and it's Patrick Beverly has agreed to a deal, Tan- Danny Green's agreed to a deal, obviously we're going to be like, good. The good, like the right, the good thing happened. But I don't think that invalidates anything what we're saying right now because. Like I said, it's the process over the results. And I just don't understand how if you're the Mavericks, you can come away. You know, I'm not saying they needed to spend their 30 million cap space by 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Central time. But they needed to do something like if you're going after mid-tier guys, they're the first guys to go. Like as we as I know, I'm, bro- I'm a broken record. I know I just said that, but I can't emphasize that enough. And if I know that, they should know that. They definitely know that. You know, I'm, they're not stupid. But it's just it's just a little mind-boggling how they, like you said, they could be caught with their pants down. And now it feels like they're for the eighth summer in a row. They are in scramble recovery mode. You know, unless they are working on a deal that we do not know in terms of trades. You know, that's kind of the feeling. And, you know, you feel like every summer the Mavericks don't do the thing that they wanted to do. And then they kind of have to recover and scramble and and sign a guy like Harrison Barnes was not their plan. But they had to do something when Chandler Parsons wrecked his knee again. You know, they wanted to get Dwight Howard and they didn't get him. And they I'm pretty sure there were reports the Mavericks had nothing to do with Monte Ellis. And then they had to sign Monte Ellis because they were left holding the bag at the end of the night and they needed to give it to someone. So, you know, and it ended up working out for them. You know, they have an amazing ability to adapt and adjust and recover. It's just, man, they, I wish they wouldn't have to keep doing that. Well, there's two things I want to, want to touch on. And one of, them, one of them is, all right, so we went in to free agency understanding their top priorities were shooting a secondary ball handler to Luka and then like a banger. We don't have any of those things. <laughs> <laughs> and I I just want to really just focus on that again. Second thing. So what I, earlier I touched on something during my rage blackout where I said I don't think the Mavericks have a appreciation for where they are in their own rebuild. We all believe in Chris Tapps Porzingis. We certainly believe in Luka Doncic. The thing is, they've not done anything. They haven't played together. They've not played a minute. Uh the Porzingis thing's a bit of a is, a, is a, is actually a much bigger gamble than I think we're all talking about locally, just because everyone wants to buy in and there's good reason for that. But until the Mavericks acknowledge that where they are in their own rebuild, they're going to have a hard time with this. The fact that, that it occurred to them, uh, you know, whatever, about 9 p.m. Eastern time tonight to be involved with this, you know, Philadelphia heat trade to be as a salary dump, meant at some point over the last six hours, they realized they weren't going to get who they thought they were going to get or their chances were at least going down to where they'd be willing to take on Kelly Olenek or maybe Goran Dragic. We don't know what the official – we know what the, what's been said to, to media, but we don't really know the true story. But it meant they pivoted from thinking that they were a player 
to understanding that they were a salary ground. Now, understanding that, what I want to know is it, it, why have they been so late to some of these other deals? Since we have, you know, we didn't even talk about the fact that the, the Golden State Warriors had to uh, trade away Andre Iguodala to make some space for their uh, sign of um, R- R- D'Angelo Russell, and they traded him away uh, in his about, you know, just under, I think it's just over $17 million contract to the Memphis Grizzlies for future assets and i just you know the mavericks haven't owned future assets since ever i i I can't like during this this most recent cba as it became more and more clear that first round draft picks were of high value maybe sometimes that it escalated too high but the mavericks have have, as far as i know they've not owned someone else's first round pick I, i can't really think of anything off the top of my head and so, like, those, these sorts of things where they're not in on the deals because they don't understand where they're going to be next year are really painful. I mean, right now, just looking at this roster, I understand our, our fan base wants to say that, well, Luca and Porzingis are potentially two top 25 NBA players. That's true. But the key word there is potentially. When you look at what the Spurs have done, the Spurs are getting back a guy who is coming off of ACL. Uh, surgery, who's really good, Derek White, that I, I think. Who uh, it is. Uh, Murray, the point no, guard. Yeah, Murray, um, and who's solid. And the the Pelicans, while we've been blinking, have built up a squad. They're going to be functional next year. I don't know if they're going to be good, but they're going to be competitive as all get out. The Grizzlies are probably not going to be very good. And then there's the Rockets, who, as much as it always pains us, they're going to be pretty good. So I, I don't know where Dallas thinks they're necessarily heading. Nothing is guaranteed in the West. So a lot of these th- these moves are, are just really puzzling. And I don't want to you know, continue to beat, beat them up because I know people don't like it when you and I are cynical about these sorts of things. And, you know, being a cynic is relatively easy than being hopeful. But, like, it's reading the market. It's understanding where Dallas is. It's understanding that, no, they're not anywhere near as good as the Celtics. Stop talking about that stuff, guys. You have to look at what our team is, not what you want them to be. Right. And I think the thing is, is, like we said, it's process over results. Like, if they came away tonight empty-handed, but we heard that they, hey, they got in contact with Patrick Beverly. Hey, you know, we know that they met with Danny Green. Hey, they met with this guy. Hey, they they tried to get, you know, we if we see a report about, hey, they tried to, to get into Bogdanovich, but Utah just made too strong of an offer. They made a big push. Maybe this is to the Mavericks' detriment. Maybe they are doing all of these things and we're just not hearing them because, like you said, Dallas yes. is just very leak-proof. But this is what we have to go off of. We don't have much else to go off of. We just have to observe what's happening, what we're seeing, what we're reading, what other teams are doing that we know about. And we have to compare to what the Mavs are doing. And we have to, you know, analyze that and and kind of describe what's going on. And, you know, just with the with what's been laid out with them tonight, there, you know, absolutely. Like, yes, maybe we're being a little cynical, but I, I, I don't necessarily see how – how this is a wrong take or, or a bad take or, oh, you guys just hate the Mavs and you hate Donnie, you know, especially Kirk, you hate Donnie. I and mean, you've been uh, talking about how he's basically been running a hot streak for the last 18 months and getting, getting yeah. Luka and getting Kristaps. And he's <laughs> like, and just sometimes the, the, things, bad things happen and we have to talk about them. Yes. And the jury's really like, we just got to keep saying this. The jury's still out until free agency's up. But right now, after the first, you know, seven or so hours, it feels like they have a big bag of money with no one willing to take it. Right. And maybe people take it tomorrow. And hey, um, that would be great. And, you know, we would obviously we would talk about that and how good that is. But, you know, that hasn't happened today. And by all accounts, we don't know when it's happening because we don't see any reports about what the Mavs are doing or what they're talking about, where they're going next. And. Man, I like I, I was gonna try to be a little bit more, you know, understanding, but seeing that Brad Townsend tweet about the Mavs not even reaching out to Patrick Beverly today, that re- <laughs> I don't know, that kind of set me over the edge, uh, especially when you consider everything else that's been going on tonight. But that was that was kind of like the cherry on top of the shit Sunday for me. Yes. Well, I feel a lot better now. Um, <laughs> I think I can go to bed. Uh, I think we should reconvene in a couple of days and see how things are, because I do want to talk about some of the specifics of both Powell and Porzingis, let alone anything else that comes up. 
But I do think that that the world, you know, our our, our good friends out there in Mavs land are going to want to hear aspects of this, uh, just because it's uh, nice to know that uh, we somehow, as a as a fan base, can manage to all be mad about things, even if those things are not the same. <laughs> well said. Um, well, Kirk, is there anything else that you wanted to get to before we uh, maybe go to bed tonight and see what happens tomorrow morning? No, I think I'm pretty good. Yeah, I think I am too. This is enough for me. I need to go to bed. I'm too crank. Right. I'm too cranky. Once I'm past eleven o'clock, I get too cranky. You're way. I don't know how you handle it on the East Coast. You're way better at tolerating this stuff. It takes flow after midnight. <laughs> Okay, well, that's going to do it for us. First day of free agency is in the books. Uh, the Mavericks have not done much. They have, uh, just as a recap, they have re-signed Chris Stops. They have given Dwight Powell his extension for after next season. And after that, uh, there isn't much else out there for the Mavs right now. But, hey, there are still some viable options. Maybe uh, things turn around tomorrow. And if they do, uh, you know, hey, we'll probably be there to talk about it and, and be sure to check out the site. So that's going to do it for me. It's going to do it for Kirk. Kirk, thanks again for hopping on at this late hour. Appreciate it. Sure thing. Have a good one. Yep. This is the Mavs Moneyball Podcast, and we will see you next time.